Hey guys, Greg here with Paley Stable Farms. Um, I just wanted to make a video uh, laying down some two inch rigid foam insulation uh, in the garage here. Um, I got the floor up to grade and uh, as close as I could anyways. Um, so what we're using is an R10 um, two inch foam board. This is not tongue and groove foam board. So my plan is to lay this vapor barrier down um, across the floor here. As you can see I don't have it down right now. That's because I am laying down the foam board and then I'm going to pull the foam board, lay the vapor barrier down and then um, put the foam board back. Reason being is I need to fine tune the grade um, for this foam board. So it's kind of difficult to do it when you have the vapor barrier down. So normal uh, way of doing this is to put down crushed rock or pea stone. Um, I didn't do that. I just went with my uh, material that I got. It's a uh, it's a well compacting um, bank run type um, sandy gravel. Um, does have rocks and stuff, small rocks in it. Um, does compact very well. So one thing that everybody will tell you is that you need this foam board 100% flat. Meaning when you walk on it, There can't be any dips in the foam board. This is very important because what happens is when the concrete gets poured on top, you're going to have an air gap underneath the foam board and that's not good. And you want the foam board 100% supported underneath so that it doesn't have any air gaps in it. So this can be kind of challenging. Most people will just try to get it as close as they can, then throw this foam board down, and the next thing you know, the thing, you walk on it and the other corner flies up in the air because it's, uh, you know, two inches off. So, I started doing this. I started using um, a piece of wood with a level on it. Well, I take that back. Let me back up a little bit. I used the laser level here and got this as flat as I could walking around with the stick and grading it. Still not 100%, but it's plus or minus probably half, three quarters of an inch through the whole building, which is okay. You just want to make sure that you're not too high. You're better off to be too low um, in places and not too high uh, because if you're too low you just need more concrete a little bit more concrete which is better than being too high then your floor is not going to be thick enough so you always want to keep that in mind so I wanted to show how I'm doing this I like I said I started out with a piece of wood with a level on it um, and it's it's not easy for this size building you know, if you're doing a small building or whatever, you can get away with it. But being on your hands and knees all day just is not very easy. So what I did was, is I took a 2 by 6 by 6 feet long. And I made a large screed out of it, basically. Um, I took a aluminum landscape rake. And I took a piece of scrap wood I had. Uh, as basically a, a fish plate and I nailed it through the tines so that I have a handle so I don't have to sit there and bend down all the time. So what this does is, let me see if I can hold the camera here and oop, sorry about the wiggling. What I do is put this down on the floor and you pull it 
And as you can see, it'll grade it out. Now see, I don't know if you can see in the camera, but that's, that's low right there. So as you see, as you keep pulling it, see the high spot right to the left of the handle. Keep pulling it back, pulling it back, and it'll pulls the material back. Just like this. As you can see, I'm dragging a couple small rocks there. You have to pick those out. And you keep going over that until the low spot there is gone. And basically the board scrapes the whole that whole distance there evenly. And then um, then you know it's flat. It's hard to do it with a garden rake because it's not wide enough. You need you need the width. Um, that's why I built this thing. Like I said, six feet seems to be, I can't really handle any more than six feet wide, but it seems to do the job. And then when you get done, there's no gaps underneath the foam board, as you can see. Now, this still, this is a plus or minus. You know, you'll see a little bit of, I mean, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but the foam board is close to level. You know, this plus and minus a little bit, but I'm not too concerned about that. My biggest concern is getting this flat because I can it, I can always, you know, the little bit of extra concrete that it's going to take to to uh, to pull the floor is not really a big deal. Uh, another thing is I insulated all the way around the wall. Uh, this is very important. This step is always left out because you want a thermal break right here. Um, there's a lot of heat loss that gets sucked through the foundation wall. Um, so that's very important. Like I said, a lot of people miss that step. So eventually we're gonna put, uh, after we get this done, I'm gonna do about up to that second uh, piece of tape line right there. And then I'm going to pull the uh, foam board out, lay down the paper barrier, put the foam board back, and we're going to continue on. My plan is, is I want to put a radiant floor heat. So the next step is to run all the piping after we get the foam board down. Now, I am going to have my concrete guy come out and check this before I go too far. You know, obviously I'm not a professional um, concrete guy or insulation person or anything like that. So I'm going to have him come out just to double check, just to make sure it, uh, it passes for him. So that's about it. I just wanted to give you a uh, little video of how to lay down a foam board, at least how I'm doing it. If you have any other suggestions please leave them in the comments. Like I said, I'm not a professional by any stretch of the imagination, but this stuff is expensive labor-wise. If you want your floor insulated and your radiant heat put in, it's really labor-intensive for whatever reason. I shouldn't say labor-intensive. It's expensive to have the labor done to do this for whatever reason. It's several thousand dollars. Um, I think I got quoted 10 grand to put the foam board in and the piping. And I think the materials only cost probably 3500 That's today's prices, um, even with the high prices um, out there for building materials. So that's it. Uh, I will uh, take some more videos as I go along. And like always, please like and subscribe. Thanks. And have a good fourth.